Hello to all those watching this footage. It's Leviathan here, and I apologize if it seemed a bit too prolonged from my normal scheduling, because I don't want to leave you hanging, and I was a bit caught up with some other stuff. Hopefully you guys would forgive me for it. In this next footage, I will introduce you to a character known as Tyranitar. I already told you about Madame Shear, and now I'll tell you about her trademark enemy. And as long as you guys could be able to keep up with the storyline, I just hope it wouldn't be an issue when it comes to understanding her and such. And here's the storyline right here. Tyranitar, number one, The Beginning. Created and copyrighted by Levi Corsi Ames, July 13th, 2015. To begin the story, we sh shall travel to the mid-1980s, where we visit a reptile fair where the residents of New York City came to see all of the exotic reptilians. We then start focusing on a young married couple as they push their six-month-old daughter in a baby stroller. This story is particularly about that baby. Her name is Jessica Parks. When they went to examine a large crocodile, the croc went close to Jessica for a better examination. At first you might think that she would be horrified, but it turns out she was giggling in amusement with that crocodile. And for the rest of her life, Jessica had an utter fascination with reptiles of all kinds. When she got into high school, she became fast friends with Kimberly Blader, who is apparently the future Madame Shear, since they had both shared a biology class together. By this point, she had green-colored eyes and strawberry blonde hair. Unfortunately for them, their bonding will eventually fade altogether from what would become of them. By the present day, Dr. Jessica Parks decided that she would have some kind of reptilian attributes in order to be as successful and unique as Kim. On a night with a flash lightning storm, Jessica was working in Blader Tech Tower and finally created a green serum which she called in Dr. Blader to see. I finally done it, said Jessica eagerly. With this serum, I will be forever infused with a reptile's power to regenerate from any wound. Seems fine to me, Jessica, but would that even be worth it? Kimberly asked. Come on, Kim, don't you get it? She then continued as she stood next to a glass wall fearing the storm. If I get a regeneration system like a reptile, I will be one of the best ways for my existence to thrive within global fame. And as she said that, a random lightning bolt struck the glass and shattered the serum, leaving all the chemicals drenched on her. Ah, crap nuggets. This serum better not stain my lab clothes. And she starts noticing that she was feeling a bit numb. Whoa. I'm... Feeling really loopy. And Madame Shear replies, How about you go home and get a good sleep tonight, okay? Hopefully, Jessica answers back. Meanwhile, as she walked home due to being too drowsy to drive, she took a stroll through the city park and found that she is unable to walk properly, and she fell onto the wet grass, falling fast asleep under the raging storm. The next morning, Jessica awoke from the sound of a random woman screaming in shock. What are you screaming at, she asked. But when she found that her feet felt unusual, she realized that she had become 30 feet tall, had sharp claws and teeth, and possessed the legs and tail of a Tyrannosaurus. <sighs> she gasped in shock. What has happened to me? And she then remembered. Sarah had transformed me into half dinosaur. She then thought of some other explanation of her discovery, and then she got completely outraged. It's Kim's fault I ended up like this. She shall pay, she said in a solid and roaring tone. Later, back in Blader Tech Tower, Madame Shears working on some machinery when her computer system, Maya, appeared and said to her, Sir? There seemed to be an outbreak happening in Grand Central Station. What kind of outbreak? asked Kim. It appears to me that there are a swarm of reptiles attacking the people there. Maya answered back. Kimberly then realized that something bad happened to Jessica. Okay, Maya, activate the transporter to Grand Central Station, she replied. 
As she finally got there, she found that Jessica was mentally controlling a series of alligators, crocodiles, anacondas, and Komodo dragons to kill all that are there. What happened, Jessica? Madame Shear yelled at her, catching her attention. Well, if it isn't the one to blame for my permanent transfiguration. How's your day, Shear? She answered back in a direct tone. Is this all because of that serum you made last night? Obviously, Kimberly, since you're the one to blame for my eternal problem, you should think twice before you try to stop Tyranitar, the queen of the dinosaurs. She answered back. I thought the dinosaurs were extinct. Temporarily, Kimberly. Dinos Tyranitar replied as she summoned her swarm to attack her. With a series of dodging, slashing, and stabbing, Madame Shear had defeated the cold-blooded horde, and she went out to attack her opponent. However, Tyranitar reached down and snatched her in her claws. Finally, now to get up close and personal. She answered as she tried to devour her, but before she got into her mouth, Kimberly stabbed her in between her eyes, making her roar in pain and drop her to the floor. Finally released, she got an idea from the ceiling and started trying to escape from Tyranitar's clutches, but she started chasing her down. Luckily, Kim tricked Jessica into knocking down some pillars, causing a third of the building to collapse on top of her, knocking her out in the process. When she finally won, Madame Shear got surrounded by the paparazzi until they decided to stop in order to avoid messing up her space. Later that day, Tyranitar emerged from the rubble and broken architecture from the fight, and she thought to herself and finally realized what to do. If I can't defeat her on my own, maybe I would get myself some backup. And as she left the building, she finally decided to make a team. By the next time I see Kimberly again, I'll be bringing my own team, the Scantily Six, since that's the only name I could think up right now. She finally said as she left the seam in a blood-curdling roar. The end. I hope this is a efficient storyline for you guys, and hopefully you were able to catch up with it and such. It's the first villain character I've made in my Leviathan universe, and my second character I've made as well. I just hope it's efficient for all of these footages in the long run. There's so much data... But I'm trying to figure out how I'm supposed to introduce them in footages in the future. I don't want it to be a waste or anything, and I want it to be comprehensible on your guys' behalf. So every time I do some introductions and such, whether it be a storyline or a data sheet or my Levitt's paradigm itself, just bear with me because I'm trying all that I can to give you guys some calculation of my creations and such. I hope you enjoyed the storyline, and I hope you enjoyed this footage. Hope you guys have a fine time for the rest of your time and such. And until next time in Leviathan, in transmission.